The way we think about antimicrobial resistance just in the U.S., the number of deaths each year is, is equivalent to a jumbo jet full of people crashing every week. Already now we have strains that have infected patients here in the U.S. that are resistant to all uh, several dozen classes of antibiotics we have available. As a physician, I've seen that patient for which we don't have anti, you know, the proper antimicrobial therapy. It's a helpless feeling. Bacteria are, are and always will be smarter than we are, and they find ways over time to evade uh, the best things that we can throw at them. What's needed in order to incentivize folks to go all the way from start to the finish line of this marathon that we call drug development is really a, a, an, an idea of what the finish line is going to look like. Historically, we've seen an exit of large pharmaceutical companies from uh, the antibacterial market because when they look at the economic return of an antibacterial compared to other therapeutic areas, they can't make the math add up. What gives me hope is that just incremental policy changes in the regulatory arena, in the research and development funding arena have created a real resurgent um, ecosystem in the field. You've seen pharma start to come back. You've seen a number of biotechs come up even since those policy changes happen. If we can do more, I think we'll start to cement some of those gains and we may not be in a situation where we won't have enough therapies for the bacterial infections that we face.